Hey there, Rolf for Crit here, and we're here to talk about the newly announced God of War, the card game announced from Simon. This is to coincide with the God of War one year anniversary for the very successful and popular PS4 game. The PS4 game won tons of awards, Game of the Year awards. Both of us have played it, so uh, I know I know we're both big fans of that game. And Simon has done other adaptations of video games. In fact, they did Bloodborne. Uh, as a card game, which I think is probably the closest analog to this that we have from them. Also interesting that for both of these games, uh, they decided to use the card game format first rather than a board game with miniatures and pawns and tokens and things like that, although there are tokens in this game. It is a card game. They released a 15-second trailer as well as a brief description of the game, and it seems that the game follows the the idea that Ragnarok is coming. Players are playing as characters from the game, Kratos, uh, Freya, uh, Brock and Sindri, Atreus, and trying to stop Ragnarok by fighting off monsters and villains from the game, but it's not exactly following the plot of the God of War game. It's more using that world and those enemies and characters and putting them into different scenarios for the players. Uh, I just noticed it, a little interesting. It's, I, I don't know whether they this is actually because this will affect the game, but they say you're not actually playing as the heroes, but they say you play as the Norns mm-hmm. who have decided they want to not they want to sort of try to push heroes and stuff to stop Ragnarok, but then after reading more of the game detail, it just sounds like you're playing the hero. So I don't. I'm curious whether if there's going to be more like, oh, on each turn I can move Kratos, like more like I guess a, a cooperative game where like I have a card that moves Kratos too or makes him do two damage. Well, I have a card that does this instead of just I have all the Kratos cards. It's it's a little unsure at this point. Well, I that- I don't really know what a Norn is <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I do not remember them talking about Norns in the game. I guess maybe Kratos is a Norn. Uh, I don't know a ton about about the lingo of Norse mythology, but if you look later on, they do say um, that each hero will uh, begin with their own unique deck of cards. And then right. as the game progresses, you're going to be augmenting that. So it sounds like there's a heavy deck building component to this. Uh, by the way, I just did Google it, and the Norns are pretty much are the fates, in essence, the Nor- Norse version of them. So I don't know if they came, actually remember if they came up in the video game. But they pretty much control destiny, and they, uh, they, that's it. I guess, I think it's literally just a name for the players. Uh, yeah, it's a little weird the way that they worded that, but I guess, you know, they're, they're trying to be fancy with it. They're trying to set the scene for us. See, it seems how the game works is you're going to come across different quests, which are actually represented by multiple different cards that, when defeated, will actually flip over and could do something else. So, uh, I, Think, I can't remember. We've had some other games like we've seen this where like you defeat parts of bosses and stuff and they become different or stronger. Mm-hmm. I think actually the, the the new Power Rangers game, they made a special boss villain who works like that. So uh, I'm curious to see how that will work out. And supposedly once you finish one quest, you can you might choose to go to one quest or another and your choice will matter about like whether you get a bonus or uh, penalties. For the final big quest. Right. So it kind of, yeah, the cards kind of to come together to create this tableau. So you get this larger than life enemy. And it's so it kind of seems like the game is centered around, as you said, they call them quests. But to me, they seem like boss fights. Uh, but they, they did say it could be enemies or locations. So right now they just showed this dragon that you're fighting, but maybe there are later quests that don't have an enemy on it, or maybe just one section of the card has an enemy in it and you can choose to try to attack that or not. Uh, I don't know exactly what the different goals of the quests are. And at first it sounded like this was almost going to be a campaign style game where things carry over. But I think upon looking into it deeper, what it sounds like to me is that one session of the game would have multiple quests within it. I don't know if you got that, uh, that sense I, or I, not. I think it, that too, because I, I think in the description it doesn't ever use the word campaign or legacy, you know, the things that would, or multiple play sessions. Mm-hmm. So I assume it's actually um, more like, as you said, and I think part of the evidence, too, is the game designers. Fel Barros and Alexandru Olteanu. Yes. So Fel actually worked in the Bloodboard card game, which that's you pretty much just go through a bunch of bosses, which I actually enjoy a lot. 
And he has a plenty of other things too. He's supposedly he's a game designer on worked with Rising Sun, uh, Ethnos, uh, another big Simon game, mm -hmm. uh, the wor uh, World of Smog. Yeah, I see. Uh, both of them actually worked on World of Smog, and uh, Alexandru also worked on Hate, which was oh, a yeah, big Simon game. One. Yeah, so uh, some a core team that they feel comfortable working with, obviously. And yet, no minis. And yet no minis. Yeah, just going cards. Um, uh, we'll save some of that for the end because I think maybe that's maybe something like that will happen in the in the future. Uh, but looking at the the trailer that they showed off and seeing the cards with the dragon, it is very. It does look very interesting. It certainly looks more unique than just a deck building game. Uh, and I really do like the idea of, like you said, you interact with a certain part and a car flips over and the dragon is breathing fire and you have to worry about damage. And uh, it feels very dynamic. It feels interactive. Uh, and that could be really cool, I think. Well, one of the fun things about it is if you do come across this again, it could be fun do, uh, with different boss fights. It's sort of the, the, having a boss rush, I think, is very fun. One of the problems with, uh, for example, the Dark Souls, we're going to keep going on this video game train, mm -hmm. is we all, well, the both of us enjoyed the boss fight where you have to memorize uh, what kind of fighting styles they have, where they're going to hit, in the order. Uh, the grind before is a bit of a slog. This seems like we just have those boss fights, possibly. And what could be cool is if you know this, the boss fight before, like, okay, well, actually, if we can break its arm first... Uh, we're going to be able to deal more damage to the head or something, or maybe you'll give the less damage, something like that. Yeah, you can see that in the corner they have a tracking card, the number 60, that says that the dragon's head only takes damage from the interaction spot. So, yeah, it does seem like you're going to have to specifically, basically more of a puzzle-like experience than just pure combat to figure things out. And from the description, it sounds like the way you can upgrade your character, you can choose what kind of character, how, uh, for example, Kratos, if he goes more attack or maybe runes uh, to follow the game. So then you could sort of uh, customize your deck depending on who's playing as who to in order to uh, maximize your efficiency. Yeah, my big biggest question, I think, from reading the description, because they, of course, mentioned that you have health. So then the question becomes, is there player elimination? How do they handle death in this game? Which I would be surprised if they had that, but uh, maybe it's simply that you all players lose if someone dies. That's That would be my guess. Uh, because it's cooperative, I think that's more likely. Mm -hmm. I will say that I know the Bloodborne game that one of them worked on was uh, elimination, but that was competitive. Mm. So uh, I can't say for sure. Yeah, who, who knows exactly. I also like that on the box, uh, they have a PlayStation logo. It says official licensed product. I don't know if the Bloodborne game had that. It as does. Well. It does. It, it, yep. <laughs> so I guess they are um, uh, in good hands. I guess they have a good relationship. And that was what I was going to say is that post uh, Bloodborne, they did announce a Bloodborne board game. So it seems likely that if this is successful after this, we may see a God of War full-blown board game as well. You know, if Simon had this deal with PlayStation, why did they then bring some of their PlayStation exclusives to Steamforge? Uh, that's a interesting question. I do not know. Maybe maybe Sony is just yeah. Maybe they're testing the waters. Maybe those deals. I were guess in place. that's probably the better thing. But I would. I really wish Eric Lang got his hands on a uh, Horizon. <laughs> that that would have been yeah. Pro so good. Probably might have been. Uh, probably my guess is would turn out to be a better game than the one that we're going to get. But we'll see. But this is very exciting. I mean, I really like the God of War property and. Uh, I, I would be, I think it would be a lot of fun, especially if this game does well to see maybe expansions and maybe they bring in some of the Greek mythology, although it does sound, it, it's interesting the approach that they're taking because it's not, it's, it sounds like a more cerebral puzzle like experience than what a God of War game could be, which is simply combat, fighting, power, strength. You mean hate? <laughs> yeah, like like hate. Uh, I think more in line with the first three God of War games, it would just seem to make much more sense. Whereas the fourth one was a, had a stronger focus on the narrative and cinematic and uh, uh, more emotional side of things. And this, it sounds like they want to appeal to that audience. It's a cooperative experience. Uh, it also says it's between one and four players, so you can play it solo, which is always appreciated. Uh, and uh, I don't know if you actually looked at 
I pa- I tried my best to pause as much as I could during the when all the cards are flying in. Uh-huh. And they really only show two characters, from what I can tell. Mm-hmm. But it, they do also show, like, it seems a poison card, so I assume there could be status effects shuffled into your deck. Uh, something called advance. I don't know whether that means moving around the board or advancing a specific track. Mm-hmm. And even Kratos seems to have light arrows, so I don't know if that means ranged attacks versus, like, defense yeah, there's a lot of plus ones and plus twos. So like, I I assume they're for your strength or combat, but I don't. Yeah, it's, we don't know exactly what that means just yet. There's also a die, but when you have to roll it, I don't know. <laughs> and it's really hard to see, but it looks like Kratos has like I think it was five stats I counted at the bottom, as long with his ability Spartan Rage. Mm. Like he's really the only I think a uh, big character card we see. Right. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, it looks neat. I mean, it's basically just art from the video game. Nothing too super exciting uh, aesthetically, but... Uh, I think it works, though, here. I mean, mm. the character profiles are very simple. I mean, it doesn't matter whether you're doing a TV show or something, just getting a nice frontal photo of them. But uh, the combined card, the dragon, I think it looks really well. You can tell when the card flipped, it still fits well, which is really nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's the same thing. You know, I really like with the Transformer combiners. When when you make the big combiner, you know, the art matches really nicely. I think is really important. I'm very curious to see what they do, and I hope it's good. I think this could be a very interesting system. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I can't wait to try it out. It comes out in Q3 of 2019. So we will find out before the year is up uh, whether this lives up to the video game or not. Uh, And they also did not announce if it is going to be coming to Kickstarter or not. It simply says coming Q3. So I assume that means it's not coming to Kickstarter because Bloodborne didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, Simon usually saves their big minis for Kickstarters. You're probably right. Uh, And you can stay tuned and let us know on our channel right below in the comments what you think about the God of War card game. Uh, If you've played the video game, if there are aspects you hope they bring in or maybe aspects you hope they leave out. Uh, Talk to us down there. But until then, we'll be exploring Asgard. I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. And this has been Roll for Crit. Don't forget to click that like button and, of course, subscribe for even more excellent videos. I subscribed and now I'm rich.